Isaac and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel and God knew. Later on, he says, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their suffering and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you will bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. It's been long uh, recorded that the history or the advent of slavery chronicled the Hebrew slavery that happened in Egypt. What sustained the people? What allowed them to have hope against hope? What allowed them every day, rain or shine, to believe that one day God would hear their cry? It had to be a belief in God. You cannot celebrate Juneteenth without God. You can't take God out of Juneteenth. And so let's remember with all the cultural festivals, with all of the celebrations, let's remember they had a God that they looked to and knew that one day God would deliver them. It wasn't until 1994 that I learned about Juneteenth and I went to an HBCU. And it, it, it dawned on me that this news, people who were enslaved in 1863 emancipation came 1865 june 19th people in galveston texas didn't hear that news if if it had been me i, I don't know what i would have done but here's what those people did they didn't riot they didn't tear down and loot you know what they did they celebrated juneteenth is a day of celebration it's not just a day of celebration for black people. It's a day of celebration for all people because that's the day we all got freedom. And so I love it. I'm on the planning team for the Juneteenth uh, celebration uh, that's happening this week at the, and the Perkins Center is hosting it. And when we began planning for this, this event, I told them, think of Juneteenth like a family reunion. What do you do at a family reunion? Well, first of all, there's good food. There's good fellowship and there's family. Everybody that comes to Juneteenth is family. Juneteenth is an American holiday. And I have decided not to dwell on the past. I want to use it to help inform my future. But I don't use it to gain any special power or uh, develop any victimhood. No, this is a day of celebration. Paul says in Philippians 3, verses 13 through 14, Brothers, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So, as we raise this flag, let us focus on the goal that God has for all of his, his creation. May we refuse to ignore the rights of all people who may not believe what you believe. I say that we move past tolerance and learn to embrace love. What is love? Well, I'm glad you asked. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 says love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy, does not boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but rejoices with truth. Love bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never fails. And with that, I give you Deputy Mayor Quentin Law.